episode 3 of Liar Liar, the episode where our MC actually has to somewhat use his wits to win a game. Wow. Now, I'm not quite sure how to feel about this show. It is something I really should be liking, but uh, it might be a bit hard for me to even get into. But we will talk about that later. So in this third episode, it's not too complex. Basically, Rina's or Zero Hasa's biggest simp, basically, uh, jumps down from the balcony, as we see at the end of the last episode, and challenges Shinohara to a game. Of course, he has to protect his goddess, naturally. And of course, Shinohara accepts the game, because he's just a child like that. And they have the game in two days. The game is basically a collect the card game, and then you face off, and the one with the best hand or best highest rated card, whatever, win uh, each round. Then you have to win three out of five of these card rounds to win the game. At least that's how the base rules are. It's basically like poker, just simplified, I guess, kind of. And of course, Shinohara in the end does win the game, using some trickery and some cheating and, you know, side stuff. But we do get to see him actually use his wits this time around, at least to a decent extent, kind of. Though it is not quite clear, which kind of ruins a bit of the point. But at least they're trying, okay? They're trying. Now, before I get into the small things in this episode, overall... I have to say that I really want to like this show. I really do. Like, this being a mix of No Game, No Life, Classroom of the Elite, and that sort of style of show is like a 10 out of 10, right up my alley, something I really should be loving to death. Like, this is literally like a spot-on show for me. The problem here is that either the author or the adaptation, maybe a mix of both, have this really intriguing concept with a ton of intrigue and... You know, lying here, lying there, and a potentially super intricate web of lies and different motivations and goals for each character that intermingle with each other to create this super interesting story. Or at least, that's what it could be. But, sad to say, in this third episode, it really does seem like either the author or the adapters in the anime are not able to flesh this out too well to really keep it as engaging as something like this really should be. Like, yes, of course, we know that Shinohara probably can't really lose. Maybe eventually he might in the end of the season, but at this stage, obviously, we know he isn't going to lose this early in the season, at least. At least, that's very, very unlikely, right? So, you do lose out on some of that tension. But they also, in this episode, really fail for me to make the game that engaging, not only because they make it hard to understand exactly what's going on in the game, and because of the intricate nature of these abilities they can use, and how everything interacts, especially the last phase where Shinohara ends up winning, using his tricks and wits and cheats and all that. It wasn't super clear, like, how it all unfolded. Like, yes, I got the gist of how he won using his abilities and stuff and the hacking, but it wasn't really made in a way that was suspenseful or tense or... It just, it felt off, you know? Something, sometimes you watch something and you just know that, yeah, this feels off. This doesn't feel as it should be. Something didn't quite make sense here, and that's especially what I felt during the last scene there with the show-off, but also, generally, throughout the episode, with this, with this entire game, it felt... Uh, it didn't feel as exciting as the second episode, even though the game there was way simpler. They might just do better doing simpler games, as this episode showed that they might not be the best at sort of showing these more complex games and how those things interact. That's not to say that simple games would be bad. I mean, the games in this uh, show is really interesting, and the concept of it is, is cool, and I would love to see intricate games. But to me, the most interesting part of the show isn't the game part, but it is the world and the having this sort of House of Cards-esque setup where you have people lying to get ahead here, people lying to get ahead there, people protecting people, people with this lie, people using this lie to, uh, you know, get here and do this and do that and all these different motivations and characters having their own end goal, and how that all interacts. Like, that is what is the real meat of this anime, and what can make it super good, for me at least. But again, they seem to be failing on that point a lot, so far. I'm not gonna go too much into all the skills and all the notes I made on how the game worked, because, again, I kind of, I mean, I didn't get lost, but I ended up just sort of being disinterested in the game. Uh, later in the episode, I was like, "Okay, we know we're gonna, I mean, we know he's gonna win," but and it just didn't feel super engaging. So I wanted to actually analyze all these things, especially because it feels like a show where you'd be like, "Okay, is there an ability for this? Or oh, there is an ability for this? Just just hack that in there, right?" 
which again sort of ruins the tension as well. I mean, I did like them sort of showing Shinohara having to use his wits in a way there to sort of direct the company on what to do to win the game. But uh, again, this episode felt a bit flat in comparison to the first two. Hopefully they recover from this moving forward. So and anyway, I'm going to skip most of the skills here and the game in itself. He wins. Short story, end of story. So we do get some more interesting info regarding Rina, or like the fake Sarasa, also known as, and Himajo, which is the maid, and their relationship. Because apparently they know each other. Apparently Himajo worked as a maid for the family, Sarasa's family, for like ages. And Rina and her were best friends, basically, as they grew up together with this family. And basically, apparently Rina has kept her distance from her, which we find out later uh, the reason why, as she was protecting her, etc. And then Hima Himajo uh, also basically asks Shinohara to protect her. It's like a favor to her, basically. Which she, for some reason, f fulfills already, right after. The right after. So, that was quick. But yeah, we do also find out from Rina later in the episode, where she, for some reason, spills the beans that Sarasa wasn't actually kidnapped, but she was sort of uh, obscured away from her family by Rina and scuffled away to the mainland to go to a normal school there, because that is apparently like a, d a dream she had. And Rina basically uh, had some connections and used her wits to make that happen, making it seem like it was actually kidnapped. That was a plot twist I did not expect, so good on you for that one, I guess. But I question why she would even give that information to Shinohara. I mean, she is a genius, self-described. And she seems to be at least smart generally as well, because, like, even, I mean, she wouldn't be a 7-star before if she wasn't. And basically obscuring a kidnapping like that with such a powerful family looking into it, you would have to have a lot of resources and, and wits for sure. But I don't know why she would divulge this information to Shinohara. Like, what does she gain by doing this? I mean, she is supposedly a very smart person. So why is she just opening up like this to Shinohara? And yeah, okay, he fell down and he got some broken bones or whatever. That he had had to go to the hospital for later, getting this card, and but she 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 suddenly shows up, and he wakes up to her basically uh, asking if he's okay and asking him to forfeit the game, which was also weird. Also very weird how quickly she just turned around when he said, "No, I'm not going to give up. I have something I have to do." Again, going back to this girl he has to find. It's like that entire sequence was weird to me, and also again weird how she divulged this information. I don't know why she would do that. I mean, she doesn't really gain anything by doing this, does she? See, I'm not quite sure why she would even why she would do that or give out that information or how that's going to impact the story moving forward. But I am a bit unsure on all these motivations here and why things are being done the way they are by some characters. Hopefully, though, they will make sense later. If not, well, rip me. My final thoughts on the episode here is basically that this third episode felt very convoluted, like overly so without really being interesting for it. And it felt somewhat contrived, especially with what happened with interactions with Himaji and Rina and Shinohara and the relationship between them. And of course, we do get the more, like, very waifu-esque Sundaru uh, nature from Rina at the end, because Shinohara basically says that, oh yeah, you're just my type, when she talks about what she did for her friend. And yeah, she's hung up on that, of course. And Himaji basically also being, like, very waifu-esque into Shinohara, for protecting seemingly her friend, like she wanted him to, and that he promised to. So okay, I mean, two wifes in the bag, easy game. But yeah, it is a show that, as I said in the beginning of this video, I really want to like. I, I really, really want to like it. But if they are not able to flesh out this world and this concept and the plotline here to at least a reasonable extent, like yes, I don't expect early Game of Thrones seasons of plot and storyline, that's fine. You don't have to go that far. It's okay. But they have to do somewhat better than this. I and mean, I am going to watch this through and through for sure. But I really hope they surprise me by upping their game. Upping the plot line and the story and the intricate nature between characters and motivations. And how it will interplace with each other and how it go from there. Because right now, it seems like it is overly simplistic while at the same time being convoluted while at the same time being contrived. So, yeah. I mean, I'm still hopeful, so I, I hope it turns out great. But this third episode could have used some more work, I have to say. That being said, what did you think of this third episode? Did you follow along easily? Did you get confused at any point? 
Anyway, what are your thoughts? Leave them below. I will read and respond to them the best I can. Also, any questions, feel free to comment. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, do please leave a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, as I do deeply appreciate support for this new channel here. So that being said, I will see you all in the next anime video, so have a good day, have a good night, and bye-bye.